So John, what are your top three tips for someone looking to get started in IT management? <clears throat> so, first tip that I want to share with everyone in IT management or to become an a IT manager is having a passion for people, having the drive and the will to do good for others, allowing people to grow. If people are, know more about subjects than you, then you've done a great job. If you're developing others, and you're seeing them grow, then you're doing a great job. If you're finding that you're an engineer and you have no exposure to management, I will always suggest that you're getting yourself involved with projects. And what you find by working in projects with the teams is that eventually you'll learn to adapt. You'll, you'll pick up some tips from others. And I always believe that if you have a good mentor, someone to coach you as well, eventually you can become a very good manager. Another tip for everyone who wants to become an IT manager is one area that we sometimes forget is emotional intelligence. Now, there is a big difference between sympathy and empathy. Staff will have good days and bad days. Staff will have family losses, bereavements in their families or friends, and it's down to you as a manager to be there for them in the good times and the bad times. One of the areas which I've always been very fond of is being able to support staff whenever they're going through bad moments in their lives. And by supporting them, not only are you building a great relationship with them, but you're also building loyalty. And loyalty for me in a work environment is everything. So one of the areas that I've always found um, when I was coming into management was about how can I motivate myself and how can I motivate others? And one of the things that I learned at one of the companies that I worked for, for most of my career, was situational leadership and the SDI model. The SDI model shows you, allows you to learn about yourself and it also allows you to learn about your team members, what drives them, what motivates them. Are they people focused? Are they results driven? Are they process driven? And where you'll find by doing that questionnaire, you'll be in a better place of understanding your team. Another area I learned when I was at this company in my early years was situational leadership. Now, this is by uh, two men, John Spencer and Ken Blanchard. This came out in the 70s and then it was remodeled. But it's a great way of assigning tasks to staff, teaching them, coaching them and allowing them to then deal with with the task at hand, but ensuring that they're motivated and they're committed throughout the process. So if you want to really enhance your management skills, please consider situational leadership and the SDI model. What would you say are the best ways to ensure that a project is met and delivered on time? So how do I ensure that projects are delivered on time? So in my early days, I would do very crazy hours, but as we get older, we become a little bit smarter and we realize that we can't do everything. When you have a great team or you're part of a great team, it's important that we will work together in order to deliver the project. At times though, a project will require for you to bring a contractor in, if it's three months or six months, in order to complete a particular uh, aspect of the project. This will also alleviate your team to ensure that they're actually able to deliver on the tasks that they're doing. So in my from my history or my past is if I'm short of time, the team is short of time, I'll speak to my boss and generally speaking, we'll agree on bringing a contractor in and that's when I will reach out to recruiters. What would your advice be for motivating staff? So one question that comes up in my life is how do I motivate staff? Not only do I ensure that roles and responsibilities are clear, but I, I believe that in order to motivate your staff, you need to have that one-to-one -one, um, relationship with them. Uh, ensure that if they're, if they're lacking skills, that they're actually supported. Where I am now today, I'm very grateful because I have a great management team that believe that investing in development is very important. But it's also a two-way street. Why do I say that? Uh, one of my staff is doing an apprenticeship, great, but he's also putting hours 
of his own time to do it. They've seen the way I work. They know a little bit about my professional background, but they also value the importance of having professional qualifications. You can go in IT for so long, but without having professional qualifications, CompTIA, Microsoft, uh, AWS, Cisco, the list goes on. It really does impact you in the long term when you're looking for work, you're speaking to recruiters. Trust me, if you speak to a recruiter and you've mentioned you've got five, 10 exams under your belt, it really does make their life a lot easier for them to be able to sell you, to be able to, be able to get yourself a job. What would you say your biggest success is to date? My biggest work success to date has not been the technology I've implemented, has not been the business systems I have supported or have been a part of upgrading, or the number of projects that I've run in Europe, South America, or global. It has been, my success has been all the people that I hired and all the people that work for me. The investment that I made in them in their development, the training, the support that I provided them. And to know that today, all of them, wherever they are, they are doing really, really well for themselves. So the biggest success that I've had in my life is when I've seen others grow and some are actually in a better place from a role point of view than I am. And that really makes my heart rejoice.